thank you for coming to the first annual Aspen Sports Summit. My name is Carly Umbarger. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at the Aspen Club and Spa. I just wanted to welcome all of you. Without further ado, our founder and creator of the Aspen Sports Summit, Bill Fabricini. So, rebooting the musculoskeletal system. Uh, this is one I've been dying to give for a long time, and uh, let's move forward on it. Okay, so, what I want you to watch here is, well, we've talked about blueprints of movements and what causes flawed movement, and we've been talking a lot about the nervous system. Remember I talked about how the brain wants a software program? And if the software program becomes flawed, neurologically, it, the, 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 everything Greg talked about, the connection to the muscle, movement goes awfully wrong. Go ahead, play the video for me. So right there, you see the flawed movement. And you get to, get to see some of these live today. One more time. I see the male actually did pretty good. You say square. Play that one more time for them so they can see the flawed movement. You see it. There is the flawed movement. Look at the loads. Now, as Greg talked about, somebody's not doing their job. As Shirley Sarman would say, someone didn't show up for work. Um, who didn't show up to stabilize that pattern? And that's you know, the exam and, and the things Greg looked at. And I'll look at it from a, another perspective. Now, how does that apply to everyday life and sport? Next uh, slide. Uh, I'm sorry. OK, so watch this basketball player. We have a soccer player today, today who sustained an ACL injury. But watch this go on pattern. Watch it in slow motion. Okay. OK. The musculoskeletal system, the neurological system failed. That was a flawed pattern. Her movement, her blueprint of movement is flawed. Some, somebody from the neuromuscular connecting, everything Greg's talking about, so we're all speaking the same language. The connection, the battery wire, something didn't connect. And the pattern was flawed. Now, it didn't just happen right there. It's been happening probably for years or decades. And it's led to the culminative culmination of complete lack of motor control, muscular control. Somewhat, the muscles didn't show up. They've deactivated. Lots of things can deactivate muscles. Inflammation we talked about. Just bad posture over years and bad movements. And it becomes a repetitive cycle where the brain just thinks this flawed knee valgus pattern becomes normal. That has to be rebooted. What does rebooting entail? Well, I could talk about you know, the overlap. Kicking in the correct movement patterns through stimulation of postural reflexes that affect muscle tone, thereby imparting support to our joints. It often relates to gross diagonal patterns of movement. Diagonal patterns, D1 patterns, D2 patterns, chopping patterns. We have to put those into movement to facilitate the way the architecture of the body occurs. We have to facilitate our equilibrium reactions by doing so. Being a, this way, when you trip or fall on the curb, you just don't fall off. Your body is stimulated to move. And sprinter locomotive drills. If you, I love watching sprinters. Watch the attention to detail when they move. There's no wasted energy. They're thinking about complete alignment, hip flexion, glute activation, linear motion, activation of the core, cross patterns. I put born to run on here just as an ex so you can think of phase four. And granted, some of you have arthritic joints. You'll never run again. I get that. But you still need to stimulate your cross-pattern reflexes. It doesn't matter what age you are or what your limitation is. The whole object of revving the body up, going from the infant position to the single leg posture stuff, is to get you to move. Cross-pattern movement. It can be this. It can be doing this in place. Like a sprinter, no wasted energy, dorsiflexion. Hit the foot with dorsiflexion on the ground. Activate the core. If you did this one minute a day after you you could stimulate the correct postural reflexes so you reinforce the body as an instrument the way it's designed to be used, thereby mitigating the loads on your joints, whether it's your back, your neck, whatever it is, or if you're an athlete, you know, where you create power and speed. So that is the whole concept. And there's this, is, you can just remember that, is you're born to run in multiple directions too, not just left, forward, backward. So that is the, the four-step sequence in simple terms. Be the baby, sit on the toilet, mimic the stork, born to run. That allows a doorway into explosion, as Pete talked about yesterday, some of the things, explosiveness into athleticism. With that, I can take an athlete into strength training, which I'm going to do some demonstrations here. We can go into power training, skipping and plyometrics, speed training, skill training. Remember I said strength is a skill. It's as much about turning muscles off as it is about turning muscles on. It's about projection of force through the body. 
The golf swing is a strength skilled exercise. Power, strength times speed. So the window is there. The problem we have in our society, especially with kids, is the kids all want to strength train, but there's no regard for stacking and alignment and stabilization and imbalances of muscles. We have to go back through this developmental sequence with all our athletes. Be the baby. And while we're going through the be, be the baby sequence, you can see where muscles imbalances are. You can see where hips are tight. You can see where lack of stabilization occurs. And then you can facilitate and use techniques to help improve that if you have the luxury of having a, a Greg Roscoff around. But even if you don't have that luxury and can't use that, we can still see the patterns of where the instabilities are and start to try to correct those to a degree to the best of our ability with corrective movement patterns, stimulation of the core, et cetera. Proximal stability, distal mobility. Okay? Kids all have to learn this, but you'd be surprised how many pro athletes can't do this well. They compensate. They're just super skilled. That's why I have a good job. Greg has a good job because a lot of pro athletes break down because they're not moving efficiently. Um, with that in mind, let's see, I think, let's go play. Okay, my models. What I'd like to do is everyone spread out on one side here, here, and we're going to go through some visuals. And my models, come on up. So I'm looking for Zoe, I'm looking for Kate, I'm looking for Laura. Let's see, let's see. Laura, Kate, Zoe. And let's see, how about we stand far enough back so everyone can see from a distance there and everyone can see from a distance here. Okay, and you guys will get side views and occasionally I'll have Zoe face use and I'll have Laura face use. So, Laura is a talented soccer player. Uh, tore your ACL one? ACL and MCL. ACL and MCL, how long ago? Uh, in May. In May, she's had ACL reconstruction, right? So. What we tip, uh, I'll take you through just a brief exam that I would do with Laura. I just want to introduce who it is. And Kate, uh, ski instructor, your issue with, we'll tell them the crowd briefly your issue with your hip. Uh, I just, I have all sorts of muscle imbalance, muscle weaknesses. Imbalance, weaknesses because I broke my neck in two places and so I've lost a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And her right hip is really, her right side is her weak side. It just defaults into bad movement. She can't generate force to the right side. And Zoe, you met yesterday, who is our tennis player. Tennis, aspiring tennis player who has a shoulder issue here, right? When you serve the ball, you were getting pain in the shoulder, right? Okay, so what I do with all athletes is like, Greg, first thing I'll put them on the back and we look, like I said, checked yesterday, we check for the imbalances in motion. We look for weakness, manual muscle test. Uh, Laura, why don't you come here first and then, we're, then you guys will all demonstrate. So, lie on your back here for me. So I did the whole, you know, you do this with the shoulder, shoulder girdle and the hip girdle are your engines. So you're gonna check range of motion in the shoulder. You're gonna check range of motion in the hip. Then you're gonna manual muscle test to see which muscles aren't on, which muscles aren't off. I'm just gonna shortcut it straight to extra rotation of the hip. Hold this here, brace the abs tight, resist me. Now, if that's weak, which it is here, and you know, Laura, we've been working with off and on on this. Give me a little bit more force. Come on, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. If that's giving, you know, usually you're gonna see a movement flaw in a motor pattern that's associated with that. Life sideways that way. Let's just do one more manual muscle test. These are my two favorite. So I'm checking the external rotation muscles, which I called yesterday, if you were at the hip lecture, the brake muscles. These decelerate the femur as it goes into internal rotation as you run down a mountain or do anything. Then we're gonna try the abductors here. Ready, hard as you can, resist, go. And that's gotten better, but a little bit weak. Okay, come into standing here for me now. All you guys, let's see. You two, Zoe, you face that way. Kate, you face that way. Laura, face that way first. And come over here so you're not blocking Kate. Just do some squats. Now I want to see what movement patterns look like. Do some squats for me. And let's get you the bench out of the way here. Squat. OK, right away. Freeze right there. I'm going to exaggerate. What do you see with Laura right here? Do it again. She defaulted in the external. See the toe default? This is, she defaults in the external. I'm exaggerating it, and she's trying to correct it. But you can see the foot wanted to default into external rotation right away. Okay. So her ability to create torque is limited, the external rotation. And that's where she's going to test weak. Okay. Do a few more and just see. Kate, a few more for Kate. Kate's been practicing, looking really good. That's a nice squat. See, she's really good. Okay, Zoe, show them what you got. You can see, go ahead, Zoe. Fire away with a few squats. Okay, come over here, Zoe. And Zoe, we haven't really trained yet to do the squat pattern. Or, well, a lot, a lot yet. Do a few squats for me, Zoe. So you can see knees go way forward. Go ahead, yeah. 
and just stand. Yeah. And so you can see, again, so you can see a little bit of the valgus issue here. Hips going forward. A couple more. Okay. Now let's let's crank it up. If you don't see what you want exaggerated, as Greg said, let's look at the let's look at the patterns that are shot. And that really working well. So uh, hopefully you guys can see. I'm going to turn it both ways. Laura, I want you to do a single leg squat like this. Chest up, pop up like this, and down. <laughs> now, you laugh because I do it, make it look easy, but do you think if she's playing basketball, this is going to be relevant to just do a few of them? Do your left leg? Yeah, do your right leg, yeah. Do the right, your weaker side. Now, look at her back. Is she coming out of neutral? Is her knee staying in alignment? Okay, do a few more. Okay, so those of you who are here, I'm going to demonstrate for all you guys what you're seeing. Go again, a couple more. Okay, Kate, go on there, give it a try. Zoe, you're going to go next. Show them on your strong leg, then your weak leg. So we're look, I'm looking at what the femur is doing from this perspective. Is she collapsing in the valgus? From the side view, what you're looking at, is she maintaining, can she maintain neutral? Does she collapse into a rounded flex spine? Because if she can't maintain neutral, She's dumping power. The spine is much stronger in neutral. Doesn't mean you, you can't, you have to train coming out of neutral as well. See the difference? See it from the side view, the flexion of the spine? Here it goes. It's going to dump. There, it dumped. Okay. Okay. Okay, the left side didn't though, okay? Zoe, come on. Okay, single leg. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay, here, you do it with me. Come on, we'll be models. Ready? Come on. Ready? Hold on, ready? Here we go. Down, chest up. Now come on up. So you have a, okay. Oops. It's only water. Again, up. A few more. Now her knee goes way forward over the foot, and you can see she dumps in the flexion here. Up. Now do the left or other side for me. Okay. Up. So you develop an eye to see what you're looking for. Can she maintain neutral here? Is the knee going way forward? Is it buckling in? These are all little things we're looking for. Can you guys see some? So from different views, you see different things. Now. Now, I'm not going to go ahead, put it over there. The, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but the aspiration I want their athletes to look like is can they maintain that neutral spine? Get the weight towards the heel with a neutral spine, knee over the ankle, so I can activate the posterior chain, just like a sprinter. The power is in the posterior chain, the hamstring and glutes. Chest up, pop. Now, don't you think when they're skiing or playing sports and they hit a bump and they drop, if they can get in this position quickly, reflexively, that they're going to have the power to control their ski or if they're playing basketball or soccer to hold this position to drive out of it. So there's a performance element of speed and power there, but it also does what? Mitigates the load through their joints so they don't default all of a sudden and lose motor control and poof, the knee goes buckling in and then you have a ruptured ACL. Or even if you don't have an acute injury, just the repetitiveness of doing the motion wrong, don't you think that's going to lead to a chronic injury and breakdown? So that's some of the assessment stuff we look at. What's rebooting look at? Well, the A would be the baby. All four is all of you guys right here. So show me the opposite arm leg reach, just at your own. So kick one leg behind you and opposite. So what are we looking at here? Go ahead, Kitlar, yeah. Does the spine default or collapse into rotation? That's good, Kay. That's all, reach, reach, reach. Are they maintaining a neutral spine, or are they just, is the bucket just collapsing? Are they twisting and rotating? Bring down, switch sides, please. This tells me about their posterior stabilization system, especially as we apply a rotational force on it, the muscles of the back. These muscles, if you can't maintain stabilization in this position, which is an infant developmental position, how can you expect them to maintain, you can switch one more time, guys, sorry. <laughs> How can you expect them to maintain spinal stabilization with rotational torques on their back when they're playing high-speed sports and jumping and twisting? You can't. They have to go down to this level. Until this is perfectly done, let's go through the concept of how we'd lock this down. OK, I'm going to correct them. Bring both knees down. Now, both of you guys, push your, sorry, push your hands down into the floor. Externally rotate. Good. So we're locking them, getting their lats engaged to facilitate some overdrive into their spine extensors. I correct their position, alignment first. See, Zoe needs a little work. She's younger, but she's an athlete as well, so we've got to teach her these things. Hands under your shoulders. Pop, lock. Okay, now, slowly, with only your left leg, kick it out behind you two inches off the floor. 
Don't let your back move. Come on, don't let that back move. Still defaulted a little, but not bad. Hold it. That's where we start. Until that is good, which is no progression. Kate's got it. Kate, go with your right arm out in front of you and make a fist. Squeeze that fist, stimulate the overtone to your low back. That is a still spine. Okay, Zoe, give it a shot. Hold it, hold it, much better. Okay, Laura, give it a shot. Reach, hold the position. Come on, come on, hold, hold, hold. Hold, hold, see, and break. Okay. If we can't master this, it makes no sense to be doing high speed rotational torque stuff in standing because the, the, the basic infant developmental reflexes aren't there. It's the same with planking. It's the same with bridging. Drop on your back, guys, with the bridge. Bridge is basically the foundation of squatting. If you can't bridge well, you're not going to squat well. Push through your heels, externally rotate. Default pattern you see all the time with the bridge, that they want to toe out. Don't let them toe out. Toes pointing to the ceiling. Push your hands down, facilitate tone from your lats into your low back. Lock the abs. This is why we, you know, Greg works in here. McGill talks about going in there deep with his fingertips, routhing in there. So stimulate. I just come around and I, I belly punch. Sometimes I jump on some of my higher ones. You're imparting stiffness into your spine joints. Okay, push the heels down and lift the butt up. That's level one. Hold it. If it looks good and they're holding stability and not hyperextending, I can have them kick the leg out, kick one leg out. We're looking for any rotational or twisting. This is running, this is sprinting. If they can't do this on their back and create nice hip flexion patterns and knee extension, you can switch. There's no way they can, if they can't do it here, there's no way they can do it running while controlling their pelvis. Come on, lift up, Zoe. So a little bit of hyperextension, so we've got to pull that pelvis in more so we can fine tune this all the way down. So these are the corrective patterns we're looking at. Now, hip flexion, if you, if you can't get it in standing, don't expect, I mean, if they can't do it in supine well, they're not going to do it in standing well. Get this knee way up here, Zoe, for me. Brace the abs tight. <laughs> Kate, you too. Push your hand into the knee isometrically. Now, I want to see it above 90 degrees. I need iliacus and psoas to be strong. That's good, Laura. Brace the abs. Push. Now, just let it drop down to the floor slowly. Control your spine position. Straighten the leg all the way out. We're re-educating hip flexors which are a derivative of good running mechanics. Do the other side for me. And Greg talked about the shortened pattern where muscles are weak in the shortened position. Iliacus psoas, the deep path thrusters, are almost always weak in the shortened position. Now, they might need some neurological facilitation, which are some of the great manual techniques Greg talked about. Inevitably, I have to put it into a contraction position to get that muscle rebooted and fired, and then down. Good, okay. So that's the concept, and then we work our way up. We're going to go through the next phase of just teaching good movement patterns, squatting, lunging. Let's just bump it up to whole body stability. Come on up nice and tall. So the evaluation becomes the process of be the baby, you know, sit on the toilet. What's their squat look like? Show me the stork. Show me the positions. Let's do the bowlers, okay? Or curtsy the queen. You guys behind me, follow me. This is the position of stability because both feet are down. I want you to tighten your pelvis, pull your shoulders back, and create stability through your core. Now slowly maintain stability. Excellent rotate and see if you can hold that position. She's been practicing. Now what was Kate weak with before? Her right hip. Don't you think she needs to work on this to get her right hip close chain-wise strong and down slowly? That's much better. Laura needs to work on controlling her pelvis. Because if she's never stable here, she's going to keep defaulting into an internal rotated pattern and she's going to injure her knee again. Other side. So she has to develop the motor control. Excellently rotate, put that foot down, push the knee out, stable. You have to create motor patterns that transfer over to daily life and sport. Beautiful. OK. And break. Good, really good. OK, then we take it up a level, right? We have to lead it to higher levels of movement. And I demonstrated some of this today. How about Laura, you over here? Well, you can, since you practice this, and then I'll give Kate a different one. And this is basically a movement pattern. You know, we're in that fair. So I want to see, can she come down, maintain neutral spine, glute activated? I'm looking for a lot of things here. I want to see the internal rotation of the rear hip. I want to see the external rotation of the front hip. I want to see the shoulders external rotated if they're out here. If they're behind me, she can go into internal rotation. I want to feel the quick stretch of the hip, because this is going to be an elastic element later. So let's go over here. 
and I want to stimulate good reactions through her body, or her equilibrium reaction. All the way down for me. Slide back. Okay, bring the knee down. Okay, so she's going to use extension. I have to set the core neutral because she doesn't know what neutral is. She hasn't been there in a while. Squeeze the glute. We have to reboot the glute to fire to lock the pelvis and create the elasticity of her hip flexors, which are going to be used later. The head writing reaction is off. Her head doesn't know where neutral is. So the writing reaction we refer to, which is a primitive, uh, which is an, a higher level re reflex through the brain, needs to be set. Now, as soon as she drives up, I need to see the external rotation maintained of the front knee. I don't want to see it buckle in. One, two, three, lift. Not jump, just slide it up. Okay, no, no, slide the back. Just, uh, that would be higher. Just slide it for me, Laura. Okay, ready? Come up and down. Oh, it's okay. Back wants to default. We have to train this. Hold it tight. Up. Go down again slowly. Put the hands out in front. Let's see if it's better here. Hold it, lock, go. That's a little better. Still difficulty with the spine, so I've got to take her down a level. She has to go back to planks. I've got to go down to be the baby to really refine this movement. Doesn't mean I can't practice it yet. So everyone over here in half kneeling, you three, let's just do it from the floor. Okay, so let's set this position up reflexively so you can watch all three of them from the side and see who can mimic me the best. Hold internal rotation of the rear hip, External rotation of the front hip, head it in a nice straight reaction. Sprinters, watch sprinters, there's no wasted energy. Everything is down that track because you win races by this much. Can they come up? Bam, high hip flexion, dorsiflexion, no wasted energy. Then eventually we can make that a higher level response. Up, see what you see, guys. Come on, Zoe. Dorsiflex the foot, lift the foot up here, so just say toe up. Back down, five of them for everyone. Take it slow. You're not allowed to lift until you reset. Correct. I want to see the push off off the rear foot. Take advantage of the plantar fascia stretch. Set everything. Glutes tight, abs tight. One, two, slowly control lift. Good, good. High knee lift. See the iliacus so is kicking in. Down slowly. And I don't want to see any front knee collapse. This is rebooting the pattern. It's got to be done slow control. So we get on the ball of your foot. Because when you run, what do you push off of? the ball of your foot. That also creates a nice reflex of hip activity, tight, which stabilizes the spine. One more time, guys. One, two, three, up. That's pretty good. OK, toe up, toe up, toe up. So we can improve the pattern. But we have to know when to downgrade and go back to more developmental positions. OK, come out off. OK, so then let's say year, a year has gone by or six months and they're moving really well, their core is stable. I've got to facilitate those higher reflexes for sport because they want to play sports. So come on over here behind me. Higher reflexes, cross patterns. Take these patterns and let's put them into movement patterns. No wasted energy. Core upright, chest upright, riding reaction, head straight. One at a time. Go. Knee up, knee up. Drive the knee up. Good. So you watch Laura. See if you can see the right leg versus the left leg. Too big of a jump. Smaller step, Laura is the cross pattern with the hands there. That's good, Laura, good. Too big of a step, little sore. She's got long legs. So that means she has a lot of challenge controlling her lever arms with long legs. That's a little bit better. Control your pelvis. Come on, Zoe, give it a try. That's, well, see the toe out on the right? Keep going, Zoe, you're doing great. I want to see this. See where that pattern needs to be trained? Can you guys see some of the faults? That's OK, Zoe, you're doing great. Stay tall, get taller, get taller. OK. You guys can see the difference, right? Go back so they can see it from this way. From the side view, you're going to see different things. Walk it down. Talk, talk, get taller, get taller. Pause, pause, freeze, freeze, freeze. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to correct her. Where's the load right here? It's on the knee. What's the powerful muscle of the body, powerful joint? The hip. Shift your weight back. Now, simply doing that, I've got gluteal activation, hamstring, posterior chain activation. Freeze it. OK. Elongate, head, step, go. Freeze. i got to correct you again. Bring that knee foot a little bit further forward. Good. External rotation, internal rotation. Lats engage to press the shoulder blades a little bit. Prim it. Go. Hit. Whoop. That was my reaction response right there. That's why you do vestibular training. Hold, hold, hold. Go. 
No, she's off with her hands. See, she's, she's not, a, yeah, her hands are backwards, yeah. Oh, oh, right there, so now she's correct. Okay, cross pattern reflexes. Laura, again, please. Hold, see the hyperextension in the back? Good, good. Straight, she's trying, but this is too advanced right now. You're doing great, Laura. Just little subtle things we need to work on, again. Zoe, go ahead, give it a try. Step, go ahead, walk down, just. Watch the knees, watch the spine, watch the head, watch your knee relevant. So we need to do, Zoe and I need to do a little training and work on these things like going to school, and we will. Okay. Now again, if I see weak hip extensor activity because there's denting, I backtrack to some of the most basic elemental exercises. Zoe, come over here, sweetie. I need to get her hip extensors firing. Go on all fours for me here. Just go, yeah, yeah, that's it, sweetie. No, right here. Put your knees on the ground. Go over the edge, put your hands on the floor there. So I'm just gonna do a quick reboot of her hip extensors if I can get this on me. Okay, get your chest up for me, sweetie. There you go, hold tight. Now, keeping your head right here, posture. Just kick this leg gently up to the ceiling for me. Hold right there, don't move. So now I've got some gluteal activity. I'm gonna just give her a quick reflex to facilitate. Hold, now down slowly. Open chain hip extension, kick trying to reteach her how to get the gluteals to fire in a neutral position. Hold it, so there's just, I'm starting from the baby position again. Okay, and I just fine tune that, and I'm also lengthening, reciprocally integrating her tight hip flexors in the front. Hold it, neutral. So you can see it's hard, she doesn't have the spinal stability yet, she's twisting a little bit, so I might have to take her down a level from this, but that's not bad, this is still, I'd say, a very, good exercise for her to work on. And this is one of Kate's exercises we work on for her hip. Kate, come in the middle and show them your cross pattern with the right hip we've been working on. More development. So show them the diagonal pattern, the chop pattern with the right side. Yeah, you can, and take it down. So this is strengthening hip external rotation. She's got it pretty good. She's gotten really good with it. Bringing that knee up, there's the diagonal pattern. Good. Hold it, hold it. Okay. No, no, that's good. You got the idea. Laura, over here. Show them what we've been working on. So you have to also move left to right. We can't just move forward. We've got to strengthen these patterns. Show them a few of that. And again, look for flaws of movement. Look for back issues that need to be worked on. Shift that weight back to the heel. More, more, more to the heel. Your, your, right, your right side. Yeah. I got to see her sit back more to engage her gluteals and her posterior chain. That's actually good. See the neutral spine? She's got to get back a little more on the heel to activate the hamstrings and glutes more. That's good. Now pull it in. Every soccer and hockey player needs to do this one. This is why so many hockey and soccer players, to a degree, are pulling groin and hamstring muscles. They're not working in this plane effectively. And up. Good. OK. And eventually, again, the highest level is sprinting and running and skipping. And they've got to be able to skip left and right, these higher level because they're going to go back to sports. So I can't just leave them stranded that I've just taught them foundational movement without overloading them with speed and power. So two minutes. Emil, come on out here. Thank you, guys. Just use the bar, Emil. Thank you, guys. You guys rock. So Emil's our Olympic strength training coach. So as I said, I can take those patterns anywhere. If I get a, if, if I can, this is even Zoe in a few years, she's going to have a bar. And I want to strengthen her posterior chain, which becomes a derivative of explosive hip extension power for running. They got to learn how to lift properly. Take him through a couple deadlifts, Emil. Watch his neutral spine posture. Watch his hip extension. Watch his hip external rotation. Thanks. OK. Take it up to a clean, please. Now, does that mean all athletes need to learn to Olympic lift? No. And would I take some of my older athletes who are like 40 and do this? No. But the purpose of Olympic lifting is to transfer the explosive hip extension thrust into life. Do a couple more of them. Okay, drop it. Show them a couple box jumps here now. Just show me a nice squat into a jump with a nice landing and deep flex. Yeah, deep squat into a jump. Bah, hold it. Just stick the landing for me. Hold it. Drop it. Yeah, I know, I know. It's not high enough. Hold it right there. This becomes a derivative of this. Keep the neutral spine. Extra rotation, feet facing forward, do a couple more. Do you have to do this in sport? Yes. 
If you're at most sports, anyways, you got to jump. Hold the neutral spine. Okay. And break. Right here for me. Okay. Thanks, Emil. Okay, take them up to a couple overhead ones. Do athletes have to reach and jump to go right to the clean overhead? Yeah, take it right up. Yeah, and go overhead, correct, and down. Yeah, he's got the hat in the way, that's good. Good, break. Yeah. Okay, so Olympic lifting is a form of training. Does that mean they're gonna be lifting heavy bars? It might just be a kettlebell. But eventually, Zoe's gonna have a kettlebell, she's gonna have the neutral spine, and she's gonna be lifting a weight to transfer force through her body, which is gonna become a derivative of motion for jumping. She's gonna be using a kettlebell here, showing me this, with neutral spine to get her strong, which becomes a derivative of this, which is daily life and sport. Can you explode and maintain spine position, taking advantage of reflex and elasticity? That's how you build fast, powerful athletes. But for daily life, that's how you mitigate loads through your joints. I would never take an older folks and have them do what I just did, but I'm gonna take older folks and say, let's see if you can do this eventually. And if they can do that pain-free, I might say, okay, do it twice. And then when they stumble or fall, they're gonna have correct movement patterns. Make sense? Okay, my time is up. Thank you, guys.